Hello and welcome to Hello and Welcome to Beaversity. Today we're going to be discussing how to write your dissertation in three days. Now, what makes a good dissertation? We're going to help you write a dissertation. We're going to give you an outline of the dissertation. Now, the good part about this is this is not just a dissertation. If you have a dissertation, you have a thesis, you have an applied project, you have a consultancy project, this recording is going to help you. So welcome to Beaversity, the Center for Useful Knowledge. As we said before, you want to graduate, you've got your final year project, the dissertation, the thesis, an applied research, consultant report, and a research project, you're in the right place. So an overview of what we're doing here today is we're going to discuss what a dissertation is, and then a title, uh, Basically, from everything from a title to the appendix you will learn today. And then we're going to detail how to write a chapter one. And then we'll give you an outline of chapters one to six. And then we'll go through the chapter one introduction, chapter two literary review, chapter three methodology, chapter four findings, chapter five the uh, discussion, and um, chapter six the conclusion and recommendation. And then we'll introduce you to our virtual supervision service if you need us to hold your hand. And then hopefully we can tag each other. Now, this is a long video. It's almost an hour. So if you want, you can pause here and come back to any part you want. Go grab your pen, uh, your pencil, whatever you need. And let's go. All right. Welcome to b again. Hopefully, by the time we're through with this video, you will like it uh, because it is center for useful knowledge. So what exactly is a dissertation? A dissertation is just a high level academic uh, publication that usually students, researchers would write on a chosen topic. You write it in depth. It's often part of a degree program and it's unique to you. And at the end of it, to write something that's quality, you will be awarded a degree. What's a thesis? In this presentation or this video, a dissertation is a thesis because in different parts of the world, in America, in the UK, sometimes the dissertation or thesis could either mean a BSc, could mean a master's, it could mean a PhD. But the thing is, in academia or in the university environment, you would find that a dissertation or a thesis is a structure for how an applied research project is written, how a consultancy research project is written. So consultants usually are versed in research already or any research project. So here, a thesis is a dissertation, is an evidence-based argument. It could be a research paper, it could be an essay, it could be a presentation, but it's a point of view about in-depth uh, about a subject. And it's clear and concise, and it gives the readers an overview of whatever it is they want, and it's great. So we first go into examples that will help you. This is what we're discussing here today. This is the structure of an outline of a dissertation, a thesis, an applied project, consultancy report, uh, and a project. It's a title, dedication. Okay, you can come back to this. This is what we're discussing here today, basically. From the abstract, declaration, table of contents, list of tables, list of figures, abbreviations. If you have any abbreviations, something like BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, you have to spell it out. Which have the one, two, three, four, five, six. So you put your references in your appendices. So the first thing we start with is your Roman numerals. What are usually in your Roman numerals? Obviously, your table of contents, your dedication, your acknowledgement, your abstract, declaration. Um, and if you've got any presentations or publications, you can put it in your thesis or your dissertation. Table of contents, your references, your appendices, your list of tables, list of figures, and any abbreviations. So let's start our dissertation. First, you put a title. 12 words, please. Anything longer than 12 words? will make your title ambiguous. The key with the, with, the, with the words is, your words are your keywords that form your 
literature, but also gives people an idea of what your dissertation is about. So if people look at your dissertation, they're confused about what to expect, then your, your title has not done its job. So this is an example of a title page. Entrepreneurship is a feasible career by named Happy Scholar. So it's a TC submitted in partial fulfillment of the requirements of diversity uh, for the degree of maybe a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or a doctor of science degree. The next thing you do, you have a dedication page. This is dedicated to those I love. And then you have an acknowledgement page. You acknowledge those who've supported you through the journey, your supervisor, your parents, your friends, your family, whoever it is. So let's go into the abstract. What is an abstract? An abstract is a summary of your, it captures everything that your thesis or your dissertation is about. It is usually, don't make it too long, 250 words, brief description, and uh, it tells about the purpose of the research, the methods, what, how it was conducted, and the key findings and a brief conclusion. So it's a concise summary. This is an example of an abstract. Look at any uh, journal and you will see how they write it. So they put the objectives first, they put the methods first, uh, a second, and then the findings and the contribution to knowledge, and they put in the keywords. So if you're ever lost for how to do an abstract, this is what you do. Go have a look at how other abstracts are written. It will be very helpful to you. Uh, something like this is a, a journal I looked at, Personality Truth of Women Entrepreneurs for Sustainable Food Business. We've got the authors there. This is another uh, example. Entrepreneurship is a career option for African youth. So if you look at that, it's not too long. It talks about this paper presents, so it's talking about the objectives, findings, and then it's talking about the methodology. So the narratives enhanced by the inclusion of critical incident techniques, which is anyone who's versed in certain methods would know that is a qualitative study. And then it goes into the findings. This paper concludes that the dichotomy uh, between push and pull entrepreneurship is oversimplified. Social structures such as class, education, and family background impact on ideas, opportunities, skills, motivation. Most importantly, entrepreneurship can survive in an environment with many constraints because career choices are influenced by youth entrepreneurs' perception, decision-making abilities and experiences. And then you, implications are drawn for the development of young entrepreneurs in Africa. So if you look at that, you now see the key words here, young African, critical incidents, heuristics, opportunity recognition, and entrepreneurship. And that's what you do for your project as well. So this is a summary of what to expect. Like we said, have a look. Uh, at other um, um, journals for ideas uh, of sometimes how to go from your keywords into your introduction. This is this is another journal. Uh, it talks about what is truth. Um, so you can go have a look at that later. And then we move into the contents. The table of contents should look very neat. It should look something like this. Uh, you have your chapter one, your chapter two, everything is going to come in your chapter one, two, three, 1.0, 1 1.1, 1 something like that. Make it look neat, please, because what, what usually occurs is you look at some table of contents and they're scattered all over the place. That's not very good. So have something like this. So the station structure, uh, we're now going to go into the structure. So we're going to go into chapter one. And what is your chapter one? Your chapter one is your introduction. It gives you an overview of what your topic is and the problem being addressed. So you're providing the background into why your topic is important, the purpose, the significance. You're showing what the question is that's been asked, and then you outline what's going to come in the dissertation. It's an introduction. You would find that sometimes the supervisors would read the introduction just to make sure everything's been covered. So your chapter one is basically a summary of your whole thesis. Uh, and then, uh, like I said, make it look something like this, very neat. 1.0, introduction. 1.1, a background to. Uh, what often happens with some decisions is people go into introduction and then they start writing about the background. Please don't do that. Have a 1.0 that talks about, introduces the chapter, 
do this for every chapter, by the way, and ensure that uh, everything looks good. So this is a structure of how your chapter one should look. 1.1, 1 .1, introduction 1. Oh, sorry, 1.0, introduction 1.1, your background to whatever it is you're discussing, 1.2, statement of problem, 1.3, research questions, objectives, 1.5, hypothesis, significance, uh, overview, chapter outline, and conclusion. Write your chapter one in the third person, please. No first person pronoun. No, I will now be doing this because I like uh, this topic. No, everything right here is with you are writing. It's a dissertation. Is a formal document, it should be written in the third person. So let us write a brief chapter one together before we continue with chapter two, three, four, five, and six. Maybe. Okay, let's do that. So chapter one, 1. 1.0. You will now we're now talking about a, 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 basically a dissertation. There's an introduction as an outline for management skills topic. So introduction, you write something along the lines of this chapter introduces, da, 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 introduces the background to why this decision is important. It gives you an overview of the aims and objectives and the, uh, the methods that are going to be used. And it concludes with the significance and the uh, outline, something like that. Very short, not too long. And then you go into the background, your background should give it a background to relevant titles. So it could be a background to the history and nature of entrepreneurship, something like that. Give a history of what the background of your topic is. What are the current trends? What are the critical developments in the field? Why is this important? Include any past studies, include uh, experiments, if you're a scientist, any relevant theories, any current research. Be comprehensive as much as possible to Justify why your topic is an important topic to be studied. The understanding of the topic, is it relevant to a company, an industry, a country? That's what you should do. And then we move it to 1.2, your research question. Use the five W's. Uh, you can phrase any way you want. So who, what, when, where, and why. For instance, what study methods facilitate academic excellence? That is the question for today. Then we move into the statement of the, pro, uh, of the problem. Uh, it should basically tell us why this topic or this question you're trying to address is important. What are you trying to solve or what are you trying to contribute to? Outline all of these as we go along in your hypothesis and your research. Be clear and concise why it's important to address this issue for society, for your company, for yourself. So, for instance, an example is like the purpose of this research project is to investigate the effects of online education on students' engagement and performance. Okay, and then we move into your aims and objectives. Depends on your your um, institution. It could be aims and objectives. It could just be objectives. Our remains research objectives. So you break that down. What you're doing now is you're breaking down your question into manageable chunks so that's what the objectives are they break down your research question into how to manageably research your question so you can have anything four or five uh list them like this in bullet points to evaluate the impact of let's say a practice on a specific population to identify the most effective methods of addressing an issue to compare the effectiveness of to assess the reasons to analyze the last one should always be to recommend. If you want to have a recommendation, make that the last one. Also, if your study is a quantitative study, uh, then things like, be careful of the words you use, something like assess, compare, a quantitative. Evaluate, identify, analyze, could be both. Mostly qualitative or could be both. And then we go into your research hypothesis. Hypothesis is usually if your study is a quantitative scientific study or if you're a mixed method study, then you're making basically mathematical or questions, logical questions about how you will answer your topic. So what you're doing is anything there's a correlation that in the end can be answered a statement, not too long, that can be answered with yes and no at the end or to show correlation. 
something like there's a correlation between the amount of time spent studying and academic performance. In the end, you'll be able to answer whether you, you, you found yes or you found no. Uh, increasing level of physical acti activities leads to better overall health. There's a relationship between job satisfaction and employee productivity, stuff like that. And then we move into the significance of your study. Why is this study important? Why should we be studying whatever your topic you decide to study is? This is where you now justify. Justify what the benefit is for the company. Justify what the benefit is for the society, for, for a nation, or whatever it is. Just justify that. And make sure you justify it with literature and citations, not just writing. Everything should be cited. So the outcomes of this research should be used to utilize annual reviews to increase employee workplace uh, efficiency uh, all over the place. Make sure you cite relevant literature. And then we go to the chapter outline. So chapter one was the introduction, we'll introduce the topic. Chapter two, we'll review the literature. Chapter uh, three, we'll talk about the research design. Chapter four, we'll find, so show the findings and discussions. Chapter five, we'll conclude and recommend. And chapter six, we'll reflect, something like that. And, chap and always, and with a conclusion. So summarize what you've just written clearly, very clearly and concisely. Now, sometimes the chapter 1.7 will be something along the lines of the nature of the study. This is where you talk about your methodology because some schools want to know what your methods are. If you're writing about your methodology in your chapter one, please cite. Do not just write and say, this is a mixed method study or this is a qualitative study I'm going to be collecting uh, samples from 10 people or 100 people. You have to cite because research methodology words are words that came from people. So it's not your words, you have to cite them. So we hope you got that. This is a summary of what we've done today. The outline for business management topic. Write briefly, provide the background, talk about statement of problem, so what about, we can have one to three research questions, your aims and objectives, the hypothesis, if you're doing mixed methods or quantitative, if you're doing only qualitative, you only need to have objectives, the significance of the study, why it's, inspect, why it's expected to contribute to society, to the company, to whatever knowledge or practice, you, that's where you can define any terms as well, outline the chapter, and then the conclusion. So good luck with your chapter one. We now move to your chapter two. Your chapter two is your literature review. That's where you summarize and critically review any existing literature in your topic. There's no topic in the sun that has not been written about most times. Your job is to go to the past and the present and to bring all those schools of thought and then review them. So evaluate what's been written in the past Evaluate all the key scholars, evaluate all the existing research, evaluate everything, all the frameworks in your topic, identify any gaps as well, because if you don't identify any gaps, it will seem as if your study is not very important. So what are the gaps that your study is trying to fill? Those are the four things you're expected to do and cite extensively. Make it look very neat as well, something like this. So 2.0 is your introduction. 2.1 is entrepreneurship as some universities or some people call it the theoretical framework. That's fine as well because the literature review is all your evaluating frameworks. Make sure your literature review is not just words, please. Every topic under the sun has got frameworks to evaluate. Something like this, truth theories. This is an example of the journal we, we introduced early on. It has gone back in history and populated all the theories that have been written about in the past and evaluated them. This is what you need to do for your topic. Every topic has got frameworks, evaluate some of them. Use Cortex, find four-star journals in your field, research what they're, 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 um, they're talking about. Make sure you have um, recent literature, literature from three years ago. Because for instance, if you're talking about how there's a gap in literature, maybe one year ago, that topic you're talking about has already been written about, mostly in the journal. 
So you should go to most journals and find out because that's where the original research is, that's where the significance is, that's where rigor, academic rigor is. Cite, cite, cite extensively. Make sure your figures and your and, 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 and have names like figure two and titles and then the source, cite the source as well. So always critically review your chapter two as well. So opinion of great scholars and frameworks, critically review all the for and against perspectives, make it discursive. So consider make it as in-depth as possible, interpret all the facts, the theories, uh, review the summaries, review the different perspectives of different scholars. The thing about every framework is this. Let's see Maslow's hierarchy of needs. There are some scholars that agree that this is a fantastic framework. There's some scholars that disagree that this is not a comprehensive framework. The job is to provide the perspective of the for and against perspectives. And that's when we know you're being comprehensive. And that's what you do. And then when you're not being discursive, you're engaging and going, okay, this is the for and against perspectives. And then you offer whatever it is, which is the final recommendation. So whether we say it or not, cite generously and do what? Critically review. That is what chapter, I mean, chapter two is about. So as we said, an outline of chapter uh, two is you introduce your chapter, provide a theoretical and conceptual review of all your keywords and all the frameworks, provide the contextual review. You are basically going to be discussing a case study, a company, an industry, a country, a city. Make sure you review them as well, uh, what the specifics are related to your topic, you critique current and past studies, identify gaps, and then reveal how your study will contribute to the literature in this field. So your study has to be steeped in the literature as well. And that's when you now conclude and write a summary. Conclusion and summary should not be too long, please. So we now go into your chapter one, chapter three. Your chapter three is your research methodology. This is where you reveal how you have carried out the study. How do you carry it out? What's your research design? My tip first is to find the good research methods textbook and learn all those terms because this is where you now start writing what I call writing in academic. You have to write academic words. You have to know what quantitative research, qualitative research is, and then you have to cite all those words. Sometimes you can also look at four-star journals in your field and learn how they write and how their methods are to learn how your own method is going to be. But write. And this is how it, it details how you're going to collect your, your data, your qualitative data, your quantitative data, your secondary data, your primary data. If you are collecting primary data, it doesn't have to be so. So introduce, introduce self, like what this lovely study has done. Talk about your philosophy first, positivist. Uh, positivist philosophy is quantitative methods and stuff like that. So learn the research onion, please. What is the research onion? The research onion is very popular. This is when we're peeling back how you have studied, designed your study and how you've gone about it. Most Scholars will read your chapter one, will read your chapter three, and read your conclusion. They want to know what your topic is about. That's what chapter one is. In chapter three, how did you go about it to make sure it was ethical? Was your research ethical? Then your chapter, your final chapter, to see whether it has found anything great before they go into the others. So that's this is not law, but this is what happens sometimes. So your chapter one. Oh, sorry, chapter three methodology. Okay, so chapter three, methodology. I'm going to talk about only two philosophies here, which most people use, which is positivism and interpretism. Um, positivism is when you're doing qualitative, quantitative study. Interpretism is when you're doing qualitative study. Deduction is quantitative. Induction is qualitative. If you're doing experimental survey, you're doing quantitative. If you're doing grounded theory ethnography, that's qualitative. 
you might be mixing your methods. If you are in a university, you're probably going to be doing cross-sectional research. It means only for maybe three months, one month, how many ever periods been given for your dissertation, your thesis. Longitudinal is mostly what researchers do over years. So sometimes you see some studies go over 10 years. That's longitudinal. So don't choose that. Produce your own research on your own and strip out what's not relevant to your study and present only yours. Your data, how's it going to be collected? If it's secondary data, put it there. It means that you're going to be using data from other people. Um, primary data, you're going to go out into field and either interview or collect data for yourself. And then how are you going to analyze the data? If your study is quantitative, use SPSS, presented in chats. If it's qualitative, presented as word. So something like that, something like this. This is what you're going to be doing. Describe your methodology. Describe the design in your methodology. Describe, justify why you have decided your study. Or this is the only chapter, by the way, that you can write in the past tense because you're basically describing what you've done, how you carried out the study. But write in the third person in past tense or others future tense uh, most times. So clarify your ethical considerations. Do you need consent? Ethical considerations, by the way, it's very relevant even if you are not going to be carrying out field work. If you are going to be taking another researcher's primary data and you as using it as secondary data, you have to be respectful of it. You have to cite it properly. And that is also an ethical consideration. So that's why you discuss if you are going to be doing only secondary research. How you're going to be respectful and cite people's words properly. Detail how you collect your secondary and primary data. Do not just go and write, oh, I'm going to be collecting secondary data from Google Scholar. No, it doesn't work that way. List every single source. If you can list it in your methodology, refer to it in your appendices. I'm going to be collecting secondary data from the Ministry of Agri, from the body of Agri, from Charter Management Institute, from you have to list every single thing. That's how you do a good dissertation. You don't just write, I got it from online and the library. What is that? That's nothing. It doesn't say anything. That's lazy research writing. So discuss the limitations of research. Now, a quick lesson about quantitative and qualitative methods. The difference is that quantitative, remember, quantitative is quantity, like words. Qualitative is like, it's quality. It's um, quantitative, it's like numbers. Qualitative is words. So the difference between qualitative and quantitative research is something like this. So we're discussing rice. If it's a quantitative study, it would be something like, do you eat rice? And the answer would be yes or no. So person A will say yes, person B will say no. These are things you can count. These are responses you can quantify. If it's a qualitative study, it won't be do you eat rice? It would be, why do you eat rice? Because what you're trying to get is the meaning and the feeling behind why the person does it. And you'll find that everybody will probably say something different, but yes and no. It's usually words, just that describing. Well, I eat rice because it gives me energy, or I get rice because it's available everywhere. And that's when you talk about how you present it in quotes and stuff like that. So that's the reason why quantitative methods are objective and deduction. And then it involves large samples because with large samples, you can go and quantify things in yes and no. It usually involves large samples, 100, 100,000 people, like a lot. You choose your sample, your population randomly. It's called respondents. It's usually about experiments, survey questionnaires. You analyze the large data statistically, and you can generalize and predict with it. With qualitative methods, you cannot generalize and predict because it's about subjective feelings and words, about culture sometimes. Small samples, it could be from one person to 40. Uh, it's purposive sampling. It means it's mostly convenient sampling. Most times, the data is collected through interviews, focus groups, observations, systematic analysis, contextual, and you cannot generalize. If it's mixed methods you're doing, you're doing both. So this is um, basically a structure for your chapter three, your research methods. 
you can have a look at this later and write. Okay, now quick thing about being a student researcher. You will find that uh, the student researcher will do something like this. This is what your friends think you're doing. This is what your supervisor thinks you're doing. Society thinks you're doing fantastic research. Even your fellow and your colleagues think so. Even you feel you're doing good research. Because sometimes what most people are doing is they're just sleeping. If you don't know what qualitative research is, quantitative research is, then that's what's happening here. But to understand research methods, you need or write a good dissertation to approach it like a gym. It's not a hotel. You have to do the work to get the grades to graduate. You can't not understand a little bit of research methodology and hope to write a good research dissertation, qualitative research, quantitative research. If you need help, BVST has a team that can hold your hand. We will not write your dissertation for you. We're not a dissertation writing service, but we can do virtual supervisions over the internet, help you with your design and look over things, help you in, in, uh, in addition to what your supervisor does and make sure you do great work to pass. Because what you want to do is to pass with good grades, isn't it? And that's what we're here for. We want you to be happy with your dissertation. Okay, so we go to chapter four. The chapter four is your findings. What do you do with chapter four? You present what you found, either through collecting secondary data or primary data. You present it clearly. In qualitative study, you're presenting your data in narratives, words, grouping uh, quotations thematically, or you're using in vivo to help you do that as a software. In quantitative study, you're using statistics, tables, chats, graphs to illustrate uh, whatever it is uh, you have collected, be it secondary data or primary data. SPSS software or Excel can use to do that. Remember, mixed methods, you do both. So you have displayed your findings. You now discuss them. What you do is you now interpret whatever you found in your secondary data or primary data or both. You apply the theory that you discussed already and the frameworks you discussed already in your chapter two with your literary view. Qualitative study, you use words, narratives. Quantitative study, you use statistics, tables, figures, chats, graphs. And then this is when you depict the main contribution. If you are going to be developing a model, that's when you show it and then you suggest future direction. If you're not going to develop a model, you just make sure that you now show how your own study has contributed to the literature. This is how you present your study. So thematic analysis, you're going to be discussing or presenting it, like I said, that's an example. After your, let's say, 4.1 introduces or discusses um, the findings, you will now say something like similar to Maslow 2021. It's in four out of 10 participants did not have workplace issues and presented in quotes. So your first person one, person two, directly what they said. Down. Note what I just did there. I showed you how you can describe using numbers in qualitative research. Please do not for any reason in qualitative research put any graphs, chats at all. This is not quantitative research. The opposite end in white is where quantitative research is presented. It's about positivism as where well. it's about objective facts, tables, figures, percentages, graphs, that's how you figure it. So if you look at that, the difference is, similar to Maslow's theory, 60% of respondents did not have workplace issues. I refer to chapter one. Chapter one will probably be something like that pie chart there, or the graph there. These being multivariate, therefore it is predicted that B city employers, it's about predicting things. So that's what you do. So remember, 
thematic analysis is qualitative research, words, statistical analysis, quantitative research, chats, graphs. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so we move to, this is a summary. This could be two chapters, like I said, we've introduced, we've done the results and findings, discussion of the results. If you are deriving a framework or model there, if not, you conclude. Then you move to your chapter five. Your chapter five is where you're gonna conclude. And how do you conclude? As usual, you summarize everything. So you summarize your findings and the implications of your research. And then you suggest directions for future research. So what you're doing here is you're summarizing how your research has answered your main research question. Remember your research question that you had in chapter one? Your research question they had in chapter one helped how you went to the field to collect secondary or primary data and helped what you came to present as the findings. It helped how you discussed it in light of whatever the gap is in the field. It helped to talk about how your own research contributes to the literature. So you now summarize the main findings, you make recommendations. Sometimes you can talk about the limitations of what you didn't find. And then for instance, you might be able to say something along the lines of, we went down to the field and studied um, careers of youth entrepreneurs in South America. We could not study in, uh, we only studied those in Brazil. We could not study youth in Argentina. That's now a gap and stuff like that. Or we went to Buenos Aires and we only studied in the north of Buenos Aires. We couldn't go to the south of Buenos Aires. So stuff like that. Um, you always have to follow the limitations of your study app because no study is comprehensive. And then you now read to read how your study significantly contributes to the study or to the research and to the body of knowledge in that topic. And way, hey, this is what you do. So introduce, summarize the main findings and recommendations and the limitations, and then you conclude. Now, if you are writing a consultant's report or an applied project or whatever it is, sometimes your institution will want you to have a chapter six or a seven, depending on what it is. This is where you now reflect on your experience. So if you're writing a self-reflection, you will now talk about what you've learned through the process of your study or your writing your research. You will now write a personal development plan of the things you have learned or things you are yet to learn. Uh, what, what I usually say here is please, every study should have a framework. So make sure you incorporate something like Herb's le Coves Learning uh, Circle, um, Gibbs, or any leadership theory or employability theory, and then conclude site as well. This self-reflection doesn't mean just talk about yourself. It means you have to now ground it in academic literature as well. So you have to cite as well. And that's what you do. So you refer to your school dissertation guidelines, please. Uh, it might want you to have up to chapter 10, depending if you're doing a doctorate, you might have chapter 10. If you're not, if you're doing a BSc, uh, just an applied project or whatever it is, you can have uh, chapter six or five. Make sure you have a reference list that's consistent with your school guide. So if they say Harvard style, there's an example of Harvard style, APA, Chicago IEEA, make sure you stick to that. Do not just throw in anything there, one Harvard, one AP, one Chicago, no, just keep to one style. And then in your appendices, you that's where you include your interview transcripts or any secondary data or any long tables you're referring to in any of your chapters, your survey instruments, your whatever it is that's in your appendices that could not stay in the body of your work. So that's what you do, something like this. So your reference list is everything cited, have a style AP Chicago, your bibliographies, every data that you have used, but you have not cited. And then your appendices could be your research instruments, your consent form, your questionnaire, any long tables, any images. And you have finished your dissertation or your applied project, your consultant's project, or whatever it is. And if you need any help, remember, we're here for you. Contact us at beversity.com. Contact at beversity.com and we'll tell you how much we can 
helped you along the line. These are resources that will be helpful to you. No, just a tip of our resources that will help for you if you're writing any research. Read first. Read a lot. Read plenty of research methods. Books. Read a lot about your topic. These is going to help you gain life skills. These, what you're doing now is not just something you're doing for your university. You're doing it for yourself. You're doing it for your future. Anything you need can be found in knowledge. Knowledge is fantastic. Read. Okay, what would be considered authoritative sources and citations for a dissertation? Your research methods textbook is one. If you're discussing or defining your the core topic, let's say if you want to talk about culture, your core textbook has definition for culture. Use that. Don't go to Wikipedia, which is a no, a no case source, but it's not an academic source, and say Wikipedia says culture is this. Use your core textbook. Or if you're defining what qualitative research is, quantitative research is, interpretism, positivism, use your core text. That's good. Use journals as much as possible. If you're going websites, use only industry websites. So if you're doing project management and stuff like that, every subject has got an industry website, use that, but learn how to cite websites as well. If you're doing interviews, fine. If you're not, if you're using other people's interviews, do that. Conference papers, reports, academic lectures, professional websites, education websites. The key is who wrote it? Is it properly referenced and documented? Look at all the facts, the data, the statistics before you refer to it. A key resource for how to write well is the Manchester Academic Phrase Bank. It shows you how to introduce your work, how to refer to resources, that's what you review, how to describe your methods, that's the methodology, how to report your findings, that is your findings, how to discuss your findings, that's your discussion chapter four, and how to write your conclusion. So the Manchester Academic Phrase Bank will teach you how to write a dissertation. You can use that as well. So um, I'm just going to quickly fight through that. It's something they show you how to bring resources together, how to write. They show you how to refer to literature. They show you how to write critically. And that's what you do to do a great dissertation. I hope you've liked the knowledge so far. If you did like it, please quick click on the like button. If you want, you can subscribe as well. But remember, what we'll be discussed today is your dissertation outline. So can you write a dissertation in three days? You can write a great outline in three days. You can write in a week if you want. I'm not promising anything. It's up to you. Remember, it's the gym, not hotel. Your title, your dedication, your abstract, your declaration, list of tables, table of contents, list of figures, your abbreviations, your chapter one introduction, chapter two literary review, chapter three business methodology or methodology, chapter four findings and discussion, or you can break down two chapters, chapter five conclusions and recommendation, chapter six self-reflection, brief references and appendices. These we have shown you how to do today. If you need any other help, just write in the comment section below or send us an email, remember, and good luck thank you very much for listening today we are here to support you one and one we will not write it for you but we can help because we know about assessments grading research matters um we have a team of teachers lecturers right uh, people who are good researchers who will give you good tips and essays writing and will look through your work before you submit it so check below as well because you will find um, any other information and then contact us at beversity.com. I know what happened with that .com there, but it's beversity.com and then a Twitter page. We don't put a lot there, but like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful, wonderful time and good luck as you graduate. Bye.